Pull carts for a junior, they're pretty expensive. So I went down to the thrift store and I picked up a cart for this and I made this instead. It still folds, just like the full size one, but it's only a fraction of the size. I'll show you how I made it. My four-year-old niece got her first set of golf clubs for Christmas and I thought I would buy her a little pull cart to go along with it. That is, until I saw what they actually cost. So that got me thinking. I hopped in the K-Truck and took a trip down to my local thrift store where I found this little gem for a whopping $7. First up was the task of stripping it down. Now most of the parts there are riveted, but a sharp drill bit makes pretty quick work of that. Drill out the mushroom side, then tap the rivet with a drift, and cue the terrible audio. My piece is just a shade under a meter tall, or about 3.33 units, which means and that means uh, that's pretty much the height that I'm going to need to make this for her. Really, I could call it good here, except the axles mounted the same spot where they were for a full-size bag. I have a feeling that might run into some problems. Unfortunately, I don't have the bag, but what I do have are some blocks of wood. Now, the bag I know is about 27 inches in height and roughly 3.6 kilograms. Eight pounds is taking an awful lot of force to hold it here. So, we gotta try and adjust the balance point, I think. If I just shift this down, it's going to pull these wheels further forward, like that, and then they're not straight. So, I have to make sure that everything moves evenly to keep everything tracking true, otherwise it's gonna be a real pain in the butt for her to pull this thing. So, I know that the bag that she got is... What was that horrible noise? Was that me or you? <laughs> that was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Anyways, oh, I need a bigger table. If you've watched my videos before, you can now see how much I actually have to edit them because this, this is how my day goes. And this is why I don't get more than one video a week or every two weeks. There's a lot of editing involved to make it look like I'm a professional. I forget where I was again. Balance point. Balance point. So that's why I need to adjust it so that she doesn't get tired. Let go. While she's carrying it around. Right by your foot. Dude, where is it? It's not by my foot. Once I got my ducks into somewhat of a squiggly row, I shifted the mounting bracket down 20 millimeters and marked my drill points with a punch. Four new holes were drilled with the step drill, and the bracket could then be reinstalled into its new location. For some reason, I decided that using a socket was not an option here, so you get to watch me fumble about with this open end wrench instead. Next up was to remove the legs and hack 50mm off the top with my modified portable bandsaw, and then redrill the pivot holes. With the legs dealt with for now, I turned my attention to removing the handle pivot point. Again, these were just riveted in place, but just to make things more annoying, the rivets decided to spin. A pair of pliers helped solve this, and after a bit more drilling and a few taps with the drift and hammer, the rivets were free. After measuring out about 20 centimeters from the original mounting point, I slipped the pivot bracket back onto the main bar and used the existing holes in the bracket as a template for the new holes to be drilled. Then it was off to the drill press because using the step drill made it rather hard to line up the holes. I kind of learned this one the hard way on the first go. With the new holes in place, I reinstalled the pivot bracket into its new location. A few whacks with a hammer later and I was able to reuse the old rivets. In hindsight, I really overcomplicated this. Self-tapping screws would have been the logical choice here for both speed and ease of use, so... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, I realized while I was editing that I completely forgot to show you how to figure out where you're supposed to put this hole. All you need to do is collapse the cart all the way down, line up the bar with the leg, and then use the end of the bar just to make a little scratch here. Once you put that scratch in, drill your hole, put the bar in, and you can move on to the next step, which is hitting that like and subscribe. Now that we've gone back and drilled the control rod holes, it's time to hack off the excess handle and main tube. I just took off as much of the main tube as the pivot latch would allow for, and then as much off the handle tube as well, before the handle itself actually interfered with the sliding pivot latch. The end result should look something like this. Of course, I couldn't just give her a dirty black golf cart. So after a good cleaning, I headed off to the local arts and crafts store to add a little bit of flair to the cart. My original plan was just to get some glittery tape, but as it turns out, that's not as easy to find as I thought it would be. I ended up settling on a small sheet of vinyl, which I cut into strips using Susan's Cricut paper cutter thingy, and then went about applying them to all the bars and the wheels of the cart. A heat gun made it a bit easier to navigate the fence. I 
think it turned out pretty good in the end. But then, she is four years old. Maybe I should have gone with an Elsa theme? I don't know. Disney, don't sue me. I better stick with purple. What do you think? Do you know any junior golfers stuck using a full-size cart? Let me know in the comments below. And, as always, get out in the shop and build something. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.